Hello everyone, welcome back to Morgan's Movie Collection. Criterion have just had what felt like a really long sale uh, throughout November, I think in conjunction with some Black Friday sales as well. So of course, I took it upon myself to boost my own Criterion Collection by seven movies. So we have seven new Criterion movies to add to the collection today. It was it was very exciting. I usually spend, um, or I usually only spend on Criterion around this time of year and just kind of a little bit bulk by at that point because really I think it's the only time where they're actually worth getting. Admittedly, um, I'm a big fan of the movies that Criterion put out, but I often, I mean, they're the most expensive ones, really, all in all, on average, of the whole boutique Blu-ray market, I think particularly here in, in, in Britain, they always seem to me to be more expensive than they should be. But, that being said, I always enjoy the movies they put out, don't they? We've got seven wonderful old movies today to look into. A bit of a mix, a couple I have seen before, um, five that I haven't, and a couple of ones that I think, or at least one, that will be coming up fairly soon or in the new year on It's a Wonderful Podcast, the main show, of course. So do subscribe to the It's a Wonderful Podcast feed, subscribe to this YouTube channel, uh, and ding the notification bell for all the fun stuff we do here. But of course, wherever you get your podcasts, we're there talking old movies every single week. Let's start, let's get straight on into it, with an Italian movie, La Ventura, um, from 1960. Um... Michelangelo Antonioni. I have watched more Italian movies of this era in the past year or so than I ever have before and I've been getting very much into them. This is another rather maverick one by the sounds of it. It is a movie I've, I've kind of vaguely heard of in circles and was definitely obviously interested in getting it for the reason to, you know, boost my Italian movie watching, I suppose. But the back says that Antonioni invented a new film grammar with this masterwork, an iconic piece of challenging 60s cinema and a gripping narrative on its own terms. La Ventura concerns the enigmatic disappearance of a young woman during a yachting trip off the coast of Sicily and the search taken up by her disaffected lover. Uh, and best friend. Uh, Antonioni's controversial international sensation is a gorgeously shot tale of modern ennui and spiritual isolation. You can imagine it is going to be um, rather philosophical, perhaps, shall we say, but definitely interesting. It comes with all sorts as well. It's a new uh, 4k restoration i don't think any of these movies or any of these releases are overly new i mean a couple of them are reasonably new as in just you know criterion have, have released them as blu-rays in the past six months i guess maybe even a year but a few of them are old this is number i mean this is number 98 in the criterion collection right so it's quite an old release um comes with a commentary featuring film historian gene youngblood olivier assayas on la Ventura, an analysis of the film in three parts it comes with a 58 minute documentary on antonioni uh it comes by it comes with sorry writings by antonioni um apparently read by jack nicholson which is quite interesting uh, the trailer for the movie, new subtitles, and an essay by Jeffrey Noel Smith, um, which is obviously inside the case in, in this uh, little pullout, which is all there. I won't unfold the entire thing. 
but you always get those nice things with the uh, Criterion and sometimes even a poster as well, which is uh, is quite nice. Laventura starts us off. We move on to a movie that we are going to be covering in a series in the new year on or on the main show on It's a Wonderful Podcast. I'm not sure when this series exactly will come, but this movie is All That Money Can Buy, um, also known as The Devil and Daniel Webster, a William Dieterly movie from 1941, a, a kind of dark, weird fantasy movie about the devil and um as far as i know anyway that's what it is because i haven't seen the movie um it is uh jabez stone is a hard-working farmer trying to make an honest living but a streak of bad luck tempts him to do the unthinkable bargain with the devil himself in exchange for seven years of good fortune stone promises mr scratch his soul but when the troubled farmer begins to realise the error of his choice, he enlists the aid of the one man who might save him, the legendary orator and politician Daniel Webster. Um, this is Walter Houston as well. Walter Houston plays the devil in the movie. I do know that. It's supposed to be a very uh, a very great you know, performance of the devil, one of the, one of the great kind of movie devils. Um, Edward Arnold, I think, is in this movie as well. It's quite tough to decipher because the back doesn't tell you exactly who's in it. Um, but I don't know who plays the actual lead of the movie, rather annoyingly. Um, Bernard Herrmann does the score, though, so that's a good thing. It is a new 4K restoration. I think this is a recent release as well. Um, audio commentary by Bruce Eder and Stephen C. Smith. Um, new restoration demonstration, apparently, as well. So that's nice. He's got a reading by Alec Baldwin, apparently, of the short story um, of which the film is on, on which the film is based. Uh, there is an episode of the Criterion Channel series "Observations on Film Art" about the editing in the movie. There is a comparison of the differences between the July 1941 preview version and the film's 1943 release as The Devil and Daniel Webster. Interesting, actually. Um, there is a radio adaptation. Oh, no, there are radio adaptations of short stories. Oh, no, of this movie in, in a short story and... Daniel Webster and the Sea Serpent, which is, in the, I suppose, some sort of sequel, which both feature music by Bernard Herrmann. There's got a trailer, new subtitles, and an essay by Tom Piazza, and a 1941 article by the writer of the story. Quite a lot of features for quite for Criterion in there, actually. I like that. I mean, here is the pullout as well, which... It's quite nice, and it was unfortunate in a way that that's actually not a poster, um, because I think that cover, I mean, looking at that cover, that would make a nice poster. Um, but that is that. Next up, we have The Last Picture Show, Peter Bogdanovich, Last Picture Show, um, 1971, Jeff Bridges, um, what's her name, Sybil Shepherd. And Ellen Burstyn's in the movie. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a movie I've always been kind of interested to see. Um, known, obviously, as uh, this great new Hollywood movie from the early 70s. It says one of the key films of the American 70s cinema renaissance. Um, it comes with uh, two audio commentaries featuring Peter Bogdanovich and Sybil Shepherd. Randy Quaid, Cloris Leachman and Frank Marshall. Three documentaries about the making of the movie. Screen tests, location footage. Excerpts from a, a 1972 television interview with Truffaut about the new Hollywood era. That's quite interesting. Trailers, new subtitles, an essay by Graham Fuller. A lot of stuff here. Um, it is a movie that fascinates me for its era as well. So I think that's why I kind of had to add this version to the uh, collection as well. 
and I'm excited to see it. Maybe, I mean, maybe that is one for It's a Wonderful Podcast, the main show as well, at some point, even though it is new Hollywood. Uh, 310 to Yuma is next. Um, I do realise I haven't been saying the numbers as well, the spy numbers. All That Money Can Buy is 214. Last Picture Show is 549. And this 310 to Yuma, the original from 1957, is number 657 in the Criterion Collection. Glenn Ford, Van Heflin, Delma Davis, nasty little, uh, almost noirish western um, that we did cover on the main show, so do definitely go and check that episode out. It is, it is, it's a, it's a, it's a great little movie. Um, it's nice to see Glenn Ford in a brutally nasty villainous kind of role, and Van Heflin plays a great Western everyman. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful movie. It has not too many features actually. It has new interviews with. Uh, the author Elmore Leonard and Glenn Ford's son Peter, who wrote Glenn Ford's biography. Um, it's got a full booklet, though, which does feature an essay by Kent Jones um, and is, of course, a new 4K uh, transfer and, and updated audio and all that kind of fun stuff. But I do like 310 to Humor, and obviously, if you like the... Was it Christian Bale, Ben Foster, I think, remake? Um, go and check this one out. Next, we have Sidney Lumet's Failsafe from 1964, which I, I'm led to believe is like the serious version of Doctor Strange Love. It's a Cold War thriller. Um, yeah, like nuclear, nuclear war thriller of, of the early 60s America and the Soviet Union Henry Fonda's in the movie Walter Matthau's in the movie um, so if you're into you know real tense boiling pot almost claustrophobic um, political thrillers I think Failsafe is, is the one um, or is one to seek out definitely um what does it say here on the back? Let's have a look. Starring Henry Fonda as a cool-headed US president and Walter Matthau as a trigger-happy political theorist, Failsafe is a long underappreciated alarm bell of a film sounding an urgent warning about the deadly logic of mutually assured destruction. Very constantly topical as well, unfortunately, isn't it? This kind of stuff. Um, it's got an audio commentary. Featuring Sidney Lumet, actually, that was quite interesting, from 2000. New interview with uh, Jay Hoberman on 60s nuclear paranoia and Cold War movies. That's quite interesting. A short documentary on the movie, including interviews with Lumet, with the screenwriter Walter Bernstein, and with actor Dan O'Herley, I guess is how you pronounce that name, maybe. Um, plus an essay by Bilger Abiri. I hope I have pronounced that name correctly. Number 1011 in the Criterion Collection, Failsafe. Um, I think this actually is a poster this time that you get on the uh, back of the essay. Or maybe it isn't. No, no, it might be. Well, it's, as, it's not really a poster, is it? But... It's a nice, it's nice artwork anyway. There's the essay. It's always so much of a struggle to get the, the full pullouts to come out properly. Just a couple more. Um, we have, interestingly, um, a, a movie... I don't know why I'm being slow about it. This is Imitation of Life from 19... 34, um, the remake of which from 59, I think, with Lana Turner and Juanita Moore is a favourite of Janine's, um, very much so. One that, before Janine came onto It's a Wonderful Podcast, um, told me we should cover on the show, and we did at that point, um, the 1959 version, that is. And obviously, very much enjoyed the 
the movie, but this is the this is the earlier movie. This is the first m- movie adaptation of it. Claudette Colbert, Louise Beavers, uh, John M. Stahl of Leave Her to Heaven directs the movie. Um, good melodrama director there. I don't remember who else is in this movie. I don't know if it says quickly on the back. I mean, really, the the two women are the absolute standouts, obviously, of um, this story. Particularly, obviously, I'm, I'm quite uh, excited, in a way, to see how deep Louise Beavers uh, does get. Because this is 1934, and this is a pretty meaty role for, you know, a, a black actress at this time not getting these kind of roles um, in, in mainstream Hollywood um you can only imagine how much pressure it must have felt, but I am I'm very interested to see how she does. Louise Beavers is somebody that I always enjoy when she pops up in things, but this is a you know particularly dramatic movie, a, a melodramatic movie. Um, it says Melo- melodrama master John M. Stahl brings his exquisite restraint and almost spiritually pure visual style to this devastating, enduringly relevant story of mothers and daughters. Um, it is. It's about like racial passing and embracing, you know, your true self or, or losing the, you know, losing who you are and that kind of stuff. Um, to do with race it's very very you know for 1934 when this movie came out it's very very bold in what it's doing i thought it was bold the 59 version but you know this is 25 years before that um which is stunningly impressive really um it is it there is a new introduction to this film by Imogen Sarah Smith, who is a great critic, and I, I do, I'm a great admirer of her. Um, there is a new interview with Miriam J. Petty, author of Stealing the Show, African-American Performers and Audiences in 1930s Hollywood. Interesting. Um, about the resonance of Louise Beavers and Freedy Washington's performances, who will play Louise Beavers' daughter in this movie. Uh, there is a trailer that was cut for segregated black theatres at the time. Interesting, from a historical point of view, very much so. New subtitles and a new essay by Miriam J. Petty again. Um, Warren William is the male lead in the movie as well. That's quite interesting. Let's have a look. There is the little pull-out. It's just a booklet form, this one. Imitation of Life exciting lastly i think we actually do have a movie that you could genuinely call exciting i know i like to say exciting a lot but that's really just because i get to watch movies i haven't seen before and and the fact that they're old movies i haven't seen before and that excites me but the roaring 20s raul walsh's the roaring 20s i think you could definitely call an exciting movie obviously 30s gangster movie 1939 let's also say that Imitation of Life is number 1167 in the Criterion uh, Collection, and The Roaring Twenties is number 1208. A bit of proto-noir going on here as well, obviously, given that it's a 30s gangster movie. Jimmy Cagney, Bogart, Priscilla Lane's in the movie. This is one that I have seen before, not for a long, long time, Um, and to be honest, barely remember it, so I'm excited to go back and revisit it with this lovely artwork and uh i mean that's really nice isn't it i do like that i hope it comes with a poster because i haven't actually opened this case yet um but yeah it's definitely one i'm excited to go back and, and and revisit um in this beautiful release um definitely i mean what 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 else does it say on the back here the Roaring Twenties brought to a close the celebrated Warner Brothers gangster cycle of the 30s and it remains one of the greatest and most influential crime films of all time. Um, yes, exciting. Jimmy Cagney, Bogart, play army buddies whose fortunes rise and fall 
as their fates intersect, first in a foxhole on the front lines of World War I, then in Manhattan's Prohibition-era underworld. Um, it is a new 4K restoration, of course, with uncompressed monaural soundtrack, as they all have. A new commentary, or I don't know if it's a new commentary, actually, but there is a commentary with film historian Lincoln Hurst. There is a new interview with critic Gary Giddens. There is an excerpt from a 1973 interview with Raoul Walsh, which is exciting. Raoul Walsh, as well, is the guy with the eye patch, um, who I find a fascinating director. He did White Heat, as well, later on, obviously, with Jimmy Cagney, as well as many other things, of course. Um, that was just is what comes off the top of my head first, I think. Uh, the trailer for this movie is in here, um, which I always love 30s trailers particularly, I think. Uh, new subtitles and an essay by film critic Mark Ash. Let's open it up and see what we have. Do we have a poster? No, I don't think we do. We just have a booklet, which is fine. Which is fine. We do have a... Well, yeah, it's a pull-out essay with a bit of art, nice artwork on the back. I really do like the artwork on that particular release. But there we go. Seven new Criterion additions to the collection that I am most excited to delve into. And it certainly feels like I have a respectable Criterion collection now. Hopefully, I will be back with another Morgan's Movie Collection video very, very soon. I like to come back every couple of months or so, just to, you know, discuss what uh, has been added in, in these bulk kind of sale purchase times. Um, but subscribe and ding the notification bell on this YouTube channel to see all of that, of course. And go back and, you know, check out some of the other ones from, from this year that I have put up there um, to see what I've bought, obviously. And to, you know, share. Let me know what you think about these movies. Let me know what you think about Criterion and, and Boutique Blu-rays and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, I'm excited to hear every little bit of it. And, of course, as I said before, subscribe to the main It's a Wonderful podcast feed on all podcast platforms. There are Patreon links, donation links, social media links, all in the description below. Go ahead and do that, and until next time, goodbye.